Welcome to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Today we'll be looking at what can only be described as a bit of a monster. I'll be wanting to review this one for a hell of a long time now, so let's crack on with it. The Beeman 2016S, double barrel. As with all of our air gun reviews, we always start with talking about the features of each particular rifle. So then, let's start from the rear and work our way up. At the rear of the rifle we've got a nicely formed rubber butt pad which has also been crafted with the Beeman logo in the back which is a nice little bit of attention to detail there. We've also got a nicely raised cheek piece which always helps, especially when it comes with iDoscope alignment. Towards the rear of the rifle or the rear of the action we've also got an anti-creep mount there which is always a nice little added feature. And the sights which are quite peculiar, as they're very similar to a Lee Enfield style sight, which are also, as you can see, illuminated and fully adjustable for windage and elevation. Towards the front of the barrel, you can also see the foresight, which is also, I'm sure if it's coming up, but fitted with a fiber optic dot, which greatly helps with shooting during low light conditions. Moving on to the trigger. The rifle also comes with a two-stage adjustable trigger, and, although that toggle may make you believe that it's a manual safety, like a lot of the more budget rifles on this end of the spectrum, you'd be surprised. That is actually an automatic safety that engages when the rifle is cocked. I know this isn't really a feature, but I think it's worth mentioning, so I've fallen in love with it as soon as I saw this part of the rifle. But the metalwork towards the breech area is absolutely fantastic. Look at that. Anyways, without further ado, let's move on to the final section of the rifle. And then as we go further along the rifle, we've got the main selling point of this rifle, and that is the stonking two twin barreled setup. It's certainly a bit different to see, that's for sure. It's a very, I think in general, it's a very chunky looking rifle, even without the twin barrels. But if I had to speak my mind now, we can finally finish off this rifle. I know it's just me, it's just my opinion, but I think it looks absolutely stunning. <laughs> and not in a stupid gimmicky way, I genuinely like the way this rifle looks. Anyways, that's enough of that and the features of the rifle. Now let's move on to handling. And let's see if this thing really is as heavy as it looks. So how does the Beeman double barrel actually handle? Well, when it comes to shouldering the rifle and the overall weight, you might actually be surprised. I'd say, to be honest, it might even be ever so slightly lighter or roughly the same weight than most underlever rifles on the market today, like the uh, HW97 that I shoot, the tactical stock version. It's actually surprisingly light, but why I like it is because of the chunky stock, it still feels exceptionally well made. So overall in the handling department there, I'm genuinely surprised I didn't expect that. And I think many people, when they look at pictures of it, they think it's going to be a hefty, wobbly old thing. But it's not. It's actually really nicely balanced as well. The balance sits nicely in your leading hand. And it's actually a, a really easy rifle so far to hold steady. The other thing, as I mentioned in the feature section, is the safety. It might, as I said, look like a standard toggle safety that many brake barrels and such have. But it's not. It's actually... It's still the same as those particular rifles. It's easy, it's nice reach within your finger, you just toggle it on and off. But this one's got a little trick. That's a tractor going by. This one's got a little trick. For instance, when it's cocked, I don't know if you can see this or not, it automatically engages. That's a brilliant idea. It's surprising that Beeman has put so much thought and effort into this this particular system on a rifle like this, it's like they actually really, really think that they've come up with something special here, which obviously we're going to find out later if it is or if it isn't, but that's a fantastic idea. This is possibly one of my favourite safeties that has ever been fitted to an air rifle, especially automatic safety. The, the Remington safety is a nice one, but then to reset it, you've got to bring your thumb all the way up to reset the toggle on the safety. Again, it's a good system. It's better than Virac, where you have to break, especially the 97, you have to break the lever again. But this, it just full straight to your finger. As quick as that. Fantastic. I still don't know whether I'd use it hunting or not, so again we'll have to see what it's like in the accuracy stakes a bit later on, but no, fantastic idea. Anyways, moving on. What's it like to cock? Let's find out. So what's it like to cock then? Well, you might be surprised again. 
you've got to give it a slight tap like you saw me fudge up there the first time but once you've actually gotten it moving it's pretty nice it's not that heavy at all to be honest with you I was expecting it to be a bit of a heavy old thing to be fair with you when I took it out the box I thought it was as you can tell it, it sort of kind of is I thought it was going to be a bit of a gimmicky rifle but everything so far has been silky smooth I've been impressed with it and cocking it the cocking effort in general is nowhere near what I was expecting it to be to be honest with you it's no worse than again my 97 underlever to bring down or anything like that uh, it's not as silky smooth as something like a XS19 or a HW99S or maybe some of the Virarc brake barrels but yeah so far really impressed there's not really a whole lot wrong with that I wouldn't recommend it for youngsters it could maybe be a bit too much for them like you just saw then you do have to give it a little bit of a tap to release the barrel but overall when it comes to cocking it's not too bad I might stop saying cocking now otherwise we'll get thrown off YouTube well that's stage one of handling out of the way stage two we're actually going to take the Beeman 2016S and have a go at plinking with our little plinking spinner target here at this part we'll talk about how the trigger feels in its standard configuration and how the recoil feels and how it generally feels when being shot so then as you can probably tell this is the bit that I'll be mostly looking forward to so let's stick the target out at 20 yards down our small range here and let's see how many of these we can knock down we'll take five shots as there's four on the bottom and one on the top I suppose it'll be ten shots as it's a double barrel good job at math there Dan but we'll be taking ten shots and we'll see if we can knock down all five targets I'll play the video in real time so you can see just how long it takes to cock and load the rifle and so as you can see there's no funny business going on and I'm hitting each and every target so then let's crack on this should be great fun as you can see we've set the target up just in front of the GoPro here we'll do it in real time so you might want to give it say 10 to 15 seconds for me to walk back and get myself sorted out and get the gun loaded and then we'll see what the Beeman can do this will be done using the standard Lee Enfield style flip up sight and let's see if we can use that to hit all five of these targets well then let's get to it
We had two direct hits, two skims, and a miss. That could be user error. Like I said, I'm using iron sights from about 20 yards away. But overall, yeah, I'm 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 pretty pleased with that actually. <laughs> right then, let's move on. Let's do another uh, another accuracy test actually. So that was five shots at the target at 20 yards away and we got two hits, two not quite direct hits and one miss which was mainly probably my fault. I'm used to shooting with glass on top of a rifle, I don't really use iron sights too much so uh, sorry Team Beeman, I'm afraid I let you down there. But as you may have noticed earlier, the Beeman 2016S also comes with a set of dovetail rails on top so why don't we put a scope on top of there like we have now the Milbro Clearview scope and I'll find out which pellets it likes best out of these three tins, the Thunder Sniper Lights, the Remington Express Plinking Pellets, and the JSB Jumbos. And let's put the target out to 30 yards, and let's see how we can do then. This should be interesting, and then after that we'll talk about how the rifle feels during the shot cycle, and how that trigger feels when it's actually being put into use. So then, let's set the target up, and let's crack on and see how she does. As I said, the target now has been moved out to 30 yards. I'll be shooting from a seated position. Out of the testing I did, it was actually the Remington Express planking pellets that grouped the best. The JSBs tended to shotgun all over the place and the sniper lights weren't a whole lot better. But I'll do this in real time, so you can tell there's no trickery or anything going on. As I said though, the first time, this is uh, 30 yards now, so it might take me just a couple of seconds just to get back, get myself sorted and uh, start firing. But we've got five targets there to hit. We'll have the same uh, five shots as we did last time, and let's see how many of them we can get down. Let's see how this goes.
I know I said we was going to have five shots and I might have cheated. The air gunning side of me got the better of me instead of the reviewing side and I ended up cheating and having uh, nine shots instead of the five. But we got four targets down in the nine shots. Uh, we skimmed one twice. Uh, I think that was the far left target. If you play it back, you'll hear the ting where I hit it, but not quite enough to knock it back. Uh, and the other two I put in the top target, but we barely skimmed it, just missed. You might be able to still see the pellet stuck right next to it there. But yeah, <laughs> overall, again, might have had, uh, might have hit every single one of them with my 97, but I wouldn't be smiling like I am right now if I was shooting the 97, I'll tell you that much. But yeah, let's talk about how she shoots. But what does the double-barreled Beeman 2016S actually feel like to shoot? It's actually quite nice. Uh, it rests nicely into your shoulder, the cheek piece does its job. Uh, the trigger is actually surprisingly nice. Uh, the length of pull is slightly long, but this is in its standard configuration at the moment, so with some adjusting I'm sure that'll cut that down make it a bit sharper. Overall recoil is... It's not too bad, to be fair with you, considering what it is. The recoil, there's a slight, it's a bit of a jolt. The lock time does feel fast though, that's the main thing. But there is a, is a slight kick to the shoulder. It's nothing too bad, to be fair with you, and the actual effects of the recoil are semi-muted, to be fair. But it's worth mentioning. It's not as smooth as something like a, as I've mentioned a lot already, but something like an XS19 where it's like butter when you pull the trigger, or an HW77 or 97. But at the same time, I mean, look at the rifle that we're talking about. <laughs> but it's not bad. It's actually definitely manageable. Um, it doesn't throw your sights too far off target when you pull the trigger. It actually, it's it's pretty much a... There's a very slight amount of horizontal movement. Um, I'm not sure if that's due to the barrel setup, the double barrel system, or what it is. But the, only, the, the recoil, when it does kick in, it seems to kick the gun ever so slightly to the right, in my opinion. But that could just be the way that I hold it, um, or the way I shoulder it, for instance. Um, but yeah, it's it's really quite nice to shoot. It's not too loud either. Um, there is a bit of noise from the action that you can hear. It sounds a bit like a sort of like a hollow dog barking, if that's the <laughs> if I can describe it that way. Um, but yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, over the shots we did, the Remington Express plinkers were the best by a long shot, which genuinely surprised me as most people will tell you the JSB exacts are pretty much the pellet to beat when you get a new gun you put super domes or JSBs through it but no the Remington actually far outperformed the JSBs so I will definitely be trying these I think in my later reviews when it comes to actual groups I used a piece of board to zero in as you saw the accuracy test there we've got four out of five targets you can see here where they're uh, grouping and doing their job you've got the two pellets here touching as you pull the trigger, both pellets are shot at the same time. You can't fire one off individually. And the rifle is actually being tuned so as the lower barrel actually puts out a higher velocity than the upper barrel. So they converge onto each other like you can see here. I also took a few shots off to this side where I was experimenting with changing the pellets I put in either the top barrel or the bottom barrel at this point. These were the plinkers, the Remington plinking pellets. And you can see here we've got a nice cluster here. It's about a three shot group there and you got the four pellets here you got two pellets here and we had a bit of a fly went a bit low down there and here I was experimenting by putting in the plinkers and underneath putting in a sniper light and as you can see it didn't really like that too much I had two shots and I had the plinkers the upper barrel went here and the sniper lights we had one here and the other one which is I believe way over here so that wasn't too good but in general, we had some pretty tight clusters when it comes to the groups. Like you can see, there's three pellets bedded into here with another one going low. And we had, we had some pretty tight groups. And here's the some more plinkers, more groups here. You've got a, a cluster in there, upper and bottom barrel uh, converging on each other nicely. As I said, the JSBs didn't really like uh, what they was being put through. <laughs> a, bit of a, a bit of a shotgun spread there. It is like shotgun pellets going around. But to be honest with you, I am well impressed with its accuracy. I'm sure with practice, and again, all the rifles reviewed on here are absolutely brand new unless stated otherwise. These are the first shots this rifle has fired since it's come out of the box, so I'm sure that once it's been run in, the 2016 S's, they will group even tighter than this. And consistency will only get better. So then let's move on to the overall verdict and what we overall think of the Beeman 2016 S, the monster. 
So then, what's the verdict of the Beeman 2016S? Well, when it comes to actually having fun with an air rifle, I'll say here and now, out of all the rifles I've tested, this one will give you the most smiles per mile compared to any other rifle on the market, and I genuinely mean that. Is it the most accurate thing in the world? No, but it will surprise you with what it can actually do. It's a lot more accurate than what even I gave it credit for when I first opened the box and took a look at it. I thought it was gonna be like a gimmicky type of rifle. You wouldn't really be able to hit too much with it. It's just there to blast the occasional tin can and things like that. But if you kept it within a sensible range and found a rifle, that it, a pellet, sorry, that it genuinely liked, I don't know, you could be able to hunt with it personally within about 15, 15 20 yards. I'd say you could definitely hunt with it. The shots I put down earlier, like I said, that was 30 yard shots with the Milbro Clearview sight. That was from a seated, unrested position. Um, and we got four out of five targets, which isn't too bad. Again, this is with only putting three different types of pellets through it and with a brand new rifle that isn't even run in. As I showed the groups earlier with our uh, block of wood that I was zeroing the rifle onto and testing different pellets, a fair amount of those groups, once I found the pellets that it liked, the Express plinking pellets, the Remingtons just here, a lot of the pellets was actually pretty much touching each other, with only a couple of them being flyers. So again, what we saw in the accuracy test could be a bit of me not being used to this particular type of rifle. I imagine on the market so far, or when it comes to shooters, there's not many people that are uh, used to shooting double-barreled air rifles, to be fair. I think it's a pretty new thing. But when you get used to it, I'm sure it'd be pretty much pellet on pellet up to 20 yards. You could hunt with it. I wouldn't necessarily say it'd do a better job at hunting than, say, a traditional break barrel like an XS20, XS19, or your HW99S or Hatsan. But you'll have much more fun with this when it comes to plinking time afterwards. It can hunt. It wouldn't be the best hunter in the world, but it could do it at close ranges. But when it comes to, as I said, smiles per mile, you won't top the Beeman 2016S. I can tell you that here and now. I don't care if you're a Springer man, a PCP man, or what you are. The overall build quality is also surprisingly good absolutely throughout. I'm madly in love with the stock. Even the grain and finish on this one is pretty beautiful to look at. The metalwork is absolutely superb and I've yet to see an action that will top that when it comes to the, the chunkiness of the metalwork. And the bluing is also particularly deep. This one's been with me for a few hours today in the hot sunshine and the dusty weather. We've had a few tractors going around. And you may see a few little specks of dust, but it's still pretty much as shiny as when I took it out of the box. It's lovely and deep and polished as well. This is also a bit of a, a, bit of a gimmick, but it, it, to give it some credit, it does work. You can use that sight at closer ranges. The first grouping that I did was with that sight, with the um, knocking the targets down at 15 yards. And if I remember rightly, we managed to get three out of the five targets in a five-shot group, so that's, that's pretty damn good. The trigger's pretty good. It's adjustable. Um, it is a two-stage. The trigger pull is slightly long, but to be honest with you, when it comes to rifles within this price range, um, yeah, it, it stands out as definitely one of the better ones. I wouldn't say it was quite as good as the Remington Express trigger. That is particularly sweet but it's really not too far behind. And again, you can adjust these in a very similar way to how you adjust the fire arcs by simply putting a screwdriver through the small hole in the back of the trigger guard there and adjusting a screw just behind the trigger blade. The trigger blade itself is also quite nice. It's got a sort of groove pattern on there. I'm not sure if it's coming out in the camera and it does feel really nice on your finger. The adjustable safety, the automatic, sorry, safety is also absolutely top notch in my opinion. Uh, one of the best safeties I've actually used, um, better than a lot of the high brand safeties. I'll tell you, personally, I think, in my opinion, because of how easy it is to use and disengage and re-engage, I think it is better than the Viarc push button safeties. And I also think it's better than the Air Arms trigger blade and Air Ar and Artemis sorry, uh, safeties, where the button's in the trigger blade itself, which I never really felt that comfortable with. So that's absolutely top notch as well. The cocking effort, you do need to give it a bit of a tap to open, and it does need a little bit of a, 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 a clunk when it closes. But, again, it's really not bad. You are cocking both barrels here, and I have definitely, I've broken harsher rifles before than this one. It's, it's surprisingly smooth and slick. So who could use the Beeman 2016S, and ideally, what would you use it for? Well, that one's easy. It's putting a smile on your face. Like I've mentioned, I've been shooting it pretty much all day and I haven't really been able to keep wipe the smile, this big stupid smile that I've had off my face all day long. Um, it is a backdoor garden 
rifle or close range vermin hunter you could go ratting with this and it would obliterate them like I said about 15 to 20 yards they would not stand a chance um, personally I probably wouldn't go beyond that unless there's a different tin of pellets out there that it does agree with um, 30 yards like I said we did knock four out of five targets down which I was quite impressed with uh, but that was with the nine shots instead of the five advertised but again that just proves the point that I said earlier once you start shooting it you can't really put it down it's just that fun to use uh, age groups or types of shooters I wouldn't recommend it for juniors there's a little bit of weight there a junior wouldn't be able to hold it and also as mentioned when it comes to cocking time uh, it does need a bit of a tap. The pressure's not too bad, but it does need a little bit of effort there just to open it up and close it up. So I wouldn't recommend it for juniors. Older teenagers, yes, fantastic. They'll absolutely fall madly in love with it. Um, and just grown-up shooters in general, I think they, they do definitely in their lifetime. It's one of those guns I'm going to add to the list. I know, like I said, they say the Air Arms S200 is one of the guns that you need to shoot before you die if you call yourself a proper air gun enthusiast. And the Realm Tornado is another one as well as... Uh, I think the BSA Super 10 just for what it did for BSA in the PCP market at the time. I'm going to add this to the list. I know many may not agree with me with that. It's a bit of a uh, polarizing thing to say, but I'm going to add this to the list. If you are an air gunner, even if you don't own one or buy one, you do have to at least have a go at a 2016S. You will not be able to put it down, I guarantee you. And like I said, if you're looking for something to pass the time in the garden, do a bit of shooting with, or do some close range vermin control, Although it's a bit uh, flamboyant, a bit out there, I would recommend having a shoulder of the 2016S and giving it a go. It really will surprise you with the performance that is actually on offer with this rifle. That's it for this episode of Big Dan's Air Gun Reviews. Thanks for watching. If there's any air guns you'd like us to give a review on, leave a comment down below and we'll add it to the list. Uh, subscribe if you want to see any of our latest videos. It should be uploaded hopefully any day now. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I've also found an SMK black tin of pellets on the ground out there, and I'm going to see what the uh, 2016S can do to it. I can't put the rifle down ever since I've been reviewing it, and I've just been thinking of so many things that I can kill with it and see what the catastrophic results are going to be. So uh, yeah, I'll add that to the end slate, and uh, we'll see what it can do. Thanks for watching, and take care. Jesus Christ. Well, it somehow bent the entire tin as it's hit. And where's the lid? Yeah, a bit of damage then. <laughs> oh, thanks for watching everyone. Take care and we'll see you next time.